Hello, welcome to Mixed Matters. My name is Chandra Adams, your host. I'm also here with Empire Beat Magazine, and I'm happy to say that I have here a, a great author. Her name is Leslie Banks, probably better known as L.A. Banks. She is the author of the Vampire Huntress Legend series. Hi, Leslie. Hi, how are you, Chandra? I'm doing good. We're here at the 2009 Los Angeles Black Book Expo, and I had a wonderful time here, and I believe Leslie and a lot of other people did as well. And I'm very happy to get a chance to sit down and have a talk with, with Leslie. Can you tell us a little bit about your latest book? Oh my goodness, this latest book is just crazy. I'm working on, um, actually, the wait, the fifth book in the Werewolf series, Crimson Moon series. Um, it's Cursed to Death. It comes out in October. Um, that one wasn't here yet because it hasn't been released, so what we had at the expo was uh, the last book in the Vampire Hunters series. So I write the crazy stuff, folks. You know, girl, I mean, it was wild. We had a yes. good time. Fabulous panels here. I mean, a lot of people. And, um, and I do the paranormal, but really from a cultural perspective. Um, I put the things in our stories that you may not see um, when you watch something else. Um, I deal with the, the old ladies that are, have the prayer cloth and they got the, the house anointed and they're really? not scared of the devil and they're like, and what? Oh no, you're getting out of my house. You know, I, I deal with that kind of stuff. So I just have a ball with the writing. Uh, just tell us what inspired you to write about vampires and, and werewolves. I, I know that um, vampire lore is very popular right now, so I know, but you've been working on yours for uh, quite a while, so please let us know what has inspired you to write about vampires and werewolves. Well, it's really a crazy combination. One, my agent told me, he said, listen, um, Blade is blowing up in the box office. That's when I started back in like 2001. Um, Buffy's going off the air and Anne Rice is stepping away from the whole genre. He was like, you want to try something really crazy? And I said, yeah, I'm down. I I'll try it. But I wanted to also do it from a perspective that at that time there was so many insane murders going on in Philadelphia and just in the urban environment. There were like, why do you have to rob somebody and then cut them up into little pieces? I mean, take the money, be cool with that, you know. And I started realizing that there was something very uh, sick and twisted going on in society. And it had gone beyond just a matter of it's an economic crime or, you know, a domestic crime. Now it's taking a whole new, it's over the top. So I really wanted to make a commentary on that. And I thought, you know, let, let's, let's really deal with some of the, mm -hmm. the illnesses that mm -hmm. are going on in our community. And the stuff is sick. Mm -hmm. So I've made the bad guys, vampires and werewolves. <laughs> so maybe you're hearing what I'm hearing, but you're saying that the paranormal has a quite as big intersection with our everyday normal life. Oh, honey, let me tell you. See, first of all, how do you have a company like Halliburton? That's definitely run by man, old white men from hell, okay? So I made them the Vampire Council. It made sense to me. All it's right. sucking the lifeblood out of the world. I, I use black blood at the table, a metaphor for oh, oil. Okay. You know, I get political in my work, but I have to put it, you know, kind of in, in between the fiction. But I definitely, I have some messages um, one of the big messages I also have is that, you know, a lot of young people are being told, oh, um, you can have all the money, all the bling, all the women. Doesn't that sound like something that Dracula would say? You know, you have everlasting life, you just come with us, you join our gang, you join our crew, and you got everything. Well, that's what I have the vampires telling the young people because what they don't realize is that when you get behind all of that and once you cross over and you're in it, you can't get out. You're incarcerated, you, you know, get shot, die young, all these other things. So that's sort of what I do in, in the vampire novels. I have a young man who thinks that he is going to make you know all this money and he's going to be able to avenge his brother's death by joining this group. He just doesn't understand that they're vampires. So, you know, the story takes off from there. <laughs> well, you know, I, I do believe that that's why you've been successful and that's why your work has taken off because it's easy, easily relatable. Um, yeah. I think people can really relate, relate to the storyline and, 
and the events that take place and, and what you mentioned before, lots of crime and violence and just really strange behavior. Yes. Now, what, what I'm interested in is hearing more about your werewolf series. You said it's coming out in October. Yes. Okay. Um, that one was sort of like um, G.I. Joe meets uh, Underworld. And what I was dealing with there is how a lot of our young people in the military get sent into harm's way, um, have testing and things like that done on them. So what I have is a battalion of young people who get sent on a mission and they don't realize that they've been shot up with werewolf virus. So only one of them winds up surviving and it's this young African American woman who um, has a different type of virus than the others. And she's a shadow wolf, not a werewolf and she has to go on a search, which is metaphoric for our search, to find her true roots. And it is partially embedded in the Native American culture. So whenever I come with something, I always gotta put some stuff in there. You know, it's not just straightforward vampires, straightforward werewolves, no, no, no. It's got some kind of political something going on in it, some cultural stuff in there. And um, because there's also this whole thing of, um, indigenous people being robbed of their history, yes. indigenous people being robbed of their land and of their greatness. And she happens to be not the crazy slobbering werewolf. She happens to be a shadow wolf, which is a noble creature that has been protecting man uh, you know, for eons, which is sort of the legend behind that. It's using the Native American legend to, to deal with that. One thing I really appreciate about your work is that it's it's different, and when I say different, I'm thinking in terms of African American literature and the types of, of work we have available to us. I really appreciate you putting out a really strong series about vampires. Sounds like the werewolves are going to take off pretty soon and we'll be Thanks. involved in that. Had you thought at all when you started out with the paranormal how you would, how you would and how you have contributed to African American literature? You know, when I first started out, um, I didn't even know that it would take off. All I know, well, I knew at the time, was that we weren't represented. You know, in any kind of horror movies or anything like that, we were always like the person that died in the first 30 seconds yes. and all that. Or if we made it to the end of the movie, the movie that traumatized me to make me write the way I write is um, Night of the Living Dead, the first one, mm -hmm. where the brother makes it all the way to the end in the last 30 seconds of the flick, he gets shot and yes. thrown in the pile with the rest of the zombies. I'm like, you know what? If I ever get a chance, <laughs> I'm not going to have it work like that. That brother's going to make it to the end. He's going to get the girl, all that kind of stuff. So I never saw myself at that time of ever getting to that level. Uh, you just, you don't know what you're doing. You, you can only do your best at the time. So uh, when I found out that I was in this whole paranormal genre and that I was here to stay, I looked around and there were only like maybe eight or 10 other authors in the entire country in this genre that we, I mean, if you look in the movies, we go to the movies, we watch this stuff, you know, we talk about this stuff. It's part of our, uh, sort of our, um, our cultural heritage. And I don't mean vampires and werewolves. I mean, from the standpoint that yeah. we, are, we are superstitious. You know, we talk about stuff all the time. You know, if Aunt Sue dreamt a fish, somebody's pregnant in the family. It, you know, we talk about um, a cold breeze blew through the house, so it must be a spirit. I mean, we have this as just a part of our normal lexicon. And yet we're so underrepresented in the entire um, genre of the work. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to contribute my part to it, and I wanted to bring us in as heroes and heroines, as superheroes and heroines, too. Why not? Why not us? Why not? Hey, did you did you grow up watching Blackula? I grew up watching Blackula, <laughs> Barnabas Collins in Dark Shadows, all that stuff. I mean, please, anything that came out that was vampire, werewolf, whatever, I watched it. The Lost Boys, all that stuff. So. <laughs> now, um, have you been writing all your life, or when did you first get the writing bug? Um, I, no, I actually, I had been writing all my life, but I never knew that I was a writer. You know, I would write poetry for myself, little journals, all that. But I didn't have the writer bug. Like, I never thought I would ever be an author because, again, there was no role models in my community or in my family for that you could actually do this as a living. Um, you know, I, I didn't believe in that. 
I started very late in life, and it was after a short story contest that I was trying to participate in because I was having all this other drama going on in my life, getting divorced, lost my job, child in the hospital, blah, blah, blah. And it was 10 pages, $2,500, and Essence Magazine had put it out. And I thought, 10 pages, I mean, what? That's postage and some paper. That's worth a shot. But I never got to even enter the contest because I started the the story and the story turned into 75 pages in three days and I gave it to my girlfriends and to cut it down and next thing I know they were like well what's happening next we can't help you cut it down tell the story so when I told the whole story it was 600 pages over about six weeks um, and I threw it in the closet and I thought that was it okay I, I need to get a real job stop playing around they were employed I was unemployed mm -hmm. <laughs> I was taking care of a sick baby at home all mm -hmm. this stuff and um, so I didn't believe that I could do it and they started mailing out the manuscript so that was my start in publishing truth okay. be told it okay. wasn't a self-belief okay all right well you um, you've taken off from there and I'd like to know what kind of advice would you offer new authors and would-be authors? Ah, uh, first order of business is you have got to get it from your head onto paper. You have got to write it down. And you will save yourself a lot of trouble if you started writing in manuscript format. Now when I started, I didn't know what manuscript format was. I was following the rules that were in the contest. Okay, the rules said double space, one inch margins all around, uh, 12 point times Roman font, what else? Uh, not bound and put a header on each page. I did not know that was manuscript format. Uh, but it made it easier because I was, as I was telling the story, I already had it set up in manuscript format. So a lot, I meet so many young authors or uh, new people who are you know, new to the whole writing thing and they're like, where do I begin? I'm like, get it out of your head onto the paper because until you have it on paper, it does not exist. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would say is carve out some time every day to write. Most people have a nine to five job. If you got kids, you got other things going on in your life. But there's at least two hours a day that you got TV time, telephone time, you know, like, so maybe you have to wait until nine o'clock at night until after the kids go to sleep. And maybe you wait from nine o'clock to 11 o'clock when the news comes on, uh, you know, to be able to do it. And that's when I used to write. Um, and so to sit down and do it because this is this is what people don't understand if you have to do a 300 page book right and you do five pages a day if you do five pages a day times five days a week that's 25 pages you do the math you can do a book in six weeks if you're doing 25 pages in a week you know I mean so you can actually get it done you can get uh, your book uh, out there but you have to get it onto the page and then the other thing is is to always go and try to improve your craft there are wonderful conferences all around there's the um, Romantic Times book convention there's the Romance Writers of America Horror Writers of America Mystery Writers of America Science Fiction Writers of America I mean pick your genre they have a, a conference or a they have an online community and they have a conference go to the conferences because when you sit around other people who are doing the same thing that you're doing and um, the editors and agents go to those conferences that's where you meet people so and that's who's going to tell you what's hot now what's who's buying now which um, uh, publishing houses are publishing what kinds of books and, and that type of thing so you have to continue to polish your craft even once you're published I go every year I, I gotta go and sit in the class and you know what's new what, what am I not getting what what do I need to do to stay fresh stay on top of my game and that's the only way you do it and that's good to hear that you're constantly honing your craft yeah you, you have to think about this Michael Jordan didn't become Michael Jordan and then stop practicing dude was out there hustling and practicing as hard as he had to you know because to stay on top of his game that was the only way for him to do that so you have to do that too Okay, you've, you've heard it straight from Leslie Banks. I want to thank you for joining us once again. Um, this is Chandra Adams from Mixed Matters with Leslie Banks, better known as Ellie Banks. 
Um, she'll have a lot of new, fresh material coming out in October for us. You can find uh, Mixed Matters at NorthBayMediaReview.com and Empire Beat Magazine. Dot. Empire Beat. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Empire, Beat Empire Beat Magazine online. You'll find it.